the hell were you thinking taking her that way? Well, the park is the other way. Annie wanted... What? What's this Annie wanted? I mean, <laughs> Annie can't talk. She can't think. She can't... She can think. If you ever looked at her, you'd know. Please, she's all right. That's the main thing. Can't you just stop it? Oh, what? You know this? You know she's all right. Yeah, what if the damn dog was rat? It wasn't. Mrs. Stanton told me. What? And you believe her? What, just like that? That woman's an idiot. A careless idiot. You know, anyone can say anything, sissy. You know, maybe someday you'll learn that, that anyone can say anything. I saw the dog say it, Daddy, all right? Why do you always treat me like a fool? Stop it, can't you? Both of you. She'll hear. Do you want to upset her? Oh, come on. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, you might as well talk about saying. <laughs> I figured you could use something stronger. I know I could. Down the hatch, come on. It's quick, isn't it? What they do. And it doesn't hurt them. It's quick. It doesn't hurt. They just go to sleep. Come on, drink your drink. You know as well as I do that Buddy never bit anybody before in his life. It was her. He sensed something in her. And Buddy sensed it. Dogs know. Oh, you bet. Did you hear that? Music. Someone has it really cranked up there. <laughs> Sister, I got baby. Yes, I know. Annie, what have you done?
And that concludes this year's coursework in the psychology of the unseen world. I would like to leave you with three thoughts, if I may. The first is that the investigation of psychic phenomena is an honorable pursuit, in spite of the field's tattered reputation. The second is that reality is not always quantifiable. Our inability to count, weigh, sort, or photograph some things does not mean that those things are non-existent. Third, and most important, next week's exam will not be graded on the curve. <laughs> Seriously, I thank you all for your attention and to remind you of what someone or other famous once said, the truth is out there. Enjoy your summer. Professor Reardon, question, please. Your question. Your question? There are rumors that you're planning a scientific investigation of Rose Red this summer, the Rimbauer Mansion, a sort of psychic field trip. Is that true? You are? Kevin Bollinger, class of 03. I don't recognize you, Mr. Bollinger. Is that because the group is so large, or could it be that this is your first visit to our happy family? Actually, I'm a reporter for the campus newspaper. Oh, my sympathies, Mr. Bollinger. <laughs> well, is it true, Professor Reardon, and if it is, are you planning on using departmental funds or college general funds to finance your latest spook hunt? As any regular attendee of these classes will tell you, Mr. Bollinger, I am extremely interested in rose red talk about it all the time have a picture of it on my office wall not to mention one of ellen rimbauer but as professor miller can tell you i have filed no request for either general funds or money from the department to underwrite what you term a spook hunt if you feel like asking him to confirm that he's he's right up there a question of mine mr bollinger did Professor Miller perhaps suggest you stop by my class to pose your question instead of dropping by my office like a normal reporter? <laughs> never mind, Mr. Bollinger. Let's consider the issue closed, shall we? But you never answered my question. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Exam next Tuesday at 2 o'clock. I'll see you then. If I embarrassed you, Professor Reardon, I am sorry. Mm. Don't believe it, Mr. Bollinger. Carl Miller stuck a key in your back and wound you up, and it was his intention that I be embarrassed. I am not. Even if you're not planning on using college or departmental funds for your Rose Red expedition, won't you be using a lot of psychology department equipment, uh, a lot of very expensive equipment? In fact, haven't you already entered into an agreement with Stephen Rimbauer, the last remaining family member? Good afternoon, Mr. Bollinger. Hello. Well, Joyce, we have to discuss this. I think not. Well, you're going to have to discuss it sooner or later. You know, speaking for the department, I think I can say our patience with your shenanigans has grown quite short. Professor Reardon, I saw you come and I was wondering if we could discuss my... Not now. My office hours are clearly posted. Can't you read? Oh, sorry. Um, oh, wait, uh, Miss Spruce, isn't it? Kathy Spruce, that's right. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to bite. Um, office hours between two and three. Try me then, okay? Yes, Miss Reardon.
Waterman residence. Mr. Waterman, Joyce Reardon. Oh, hello, Miss Reardon. I've been meaning to call, but I've been... Uh, Joyce, please. I've been kind of busy. Well, I understand. But I'm finalizing my list of participants for my little Rose Red field trip, and I'd really like you in. Have you thought about it? Rose Red is a dangerous place to conduct psychic experiments, Miss Reardon. Joyce, as I'm sure you must be aware. Well, with all due respect, Emery, Rose Red is a dead cell. I'm sure it is. If you're not psychic. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll just let you get back to what you're doing, shall I, and uh, move on to the next name on my list? <sighs> I doubt there are that many. Not postcognates of my caliber. You might be surprised. Good afternoon. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't say no, did I? Didn't you? No. Only 5,000 is a trifle low. If you were to be offering a bit more, say, 7,500, for instance. Mr. Waterman. Emery, please. 5,000 is my first, last, and only offer. And a generous one, I think, considering the fact that there have been no phenomena in Rose Red for five years or more. Since they stopped the tours and took away the fresh meat. Isn't that what you mean? Forgive me, but I, I find that ridiculous. In any case, the funding for this expedition is coming out of my own pocket. And 5,000 is all I can afford, so what do you say, Emery? In or out? All right, I'm in. But I warn you, if you want a videotape debriefing afterward, I get extra. That's fine, Emery. Memorial Day weekend. Mark your calendar. You send me a check, Joyce, and I will. Good day. Guess not. Save the warnings for someone who's not broke. Okay? going out of business at Griffin's. Everything's 25% off. That's too much cream. You'll make yourself fat. Er. I beg your pardon? Fat er. I'm already fat. Cream clogs up your arteries, Emma. A little's okay, but that's too much. Get my things out of the car. I tell you, I made a killing. <sighs> Mom, I was doing the bills just now. Well, what about the bills? A lot of them are past due. It's the credit cards, Mom. You... I'm very careful with the credit cards. I'm a very wise shopper. I'll get your stuff. Isn't this just the best bear? I'm going to put him on the end of my bed with Hester and Fester. What rhymes with Hester and Fester, Emmy? Hester. The woman from the college who wants to investigate Rose Red called again. See, something always turns up. God provides. I've always said so. Rose Red's supposed to be dangerous. If you take the usual precautions, you'll be fine. And we'll pray, of course. Were you able to get her up to 75? No, she's financing the expedition herself. Or so she told you, and you believed her, of course. You want to call her back? I have the number. No, a deal's a deal. One of the few sensible things your father ever said. Did you tell her it would be extra for interviews after? Physicals, EKGs? Yes. And no x-rays. They give you cancer. Now, run along and get my bags. Then you can have your pot.
Office hours are over. Come back tomorrow. I said office out. Extra credit, Miss Reardon. I'll do anything. Look good in a bathing suit. Look great in one of those uh, French maids' outfits. Come in, you idiot, and close the door. All right. Teach, you are looking good today. Oh. Mm. The idiot wants to know how you're doing. Well, I won't lie to you. It's been a tough day. But I have a call to make, a very important call. Oh. Uh. So. Well, this is the, uh, the Wheaton girl, the one you really want? Yeah, her sister. Now, look, if you can sit over there and keep quiet, you can stay. But if you feel an attack of monkey shines coming on, then just go. Get out now. You know, that's pretty tough talk, considering it's my old family homestead you want to go exploring in. But I'll be good, D. I swear. I won't do that. Sorry. Ms. Reardon? Uh, yes. Uh, how are you? I'm all right, but do you know how hard it is to keep people away from a phone in this place? Also, I'm on my break, so let's make this uh, fast. I, I could call you later. No, I don't think so. I, I still live at home, be near Annie, and my father knows who you are and what you want. He doesn't approve. What are you saying? A Annie won't take part? I'm saying that if I bring Annie to Rose Red, the chances are good that I could never go home again. That'd be all right with me, but Annie shouldn't be there without someone who understands mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. and, and, and your parents don't? Well, my mother is scared to death of her, and my father, well, I think my father hates her. What can I do? There's a school just outside of Tacoma for people like Annie. <laughs> no, there. There's no one like Annie, I don't think, but it's a place for autistic teenagers. A good place. I might as well cut right to the chase, Ms. Reardon. 5,000 isn't gonna be enough. If you can promise 10, I might try to make this happen. 10,000 done. Um, I'll bring the check to you myself uh, this afternoon. Where, uh, where do you work? No, you need to slow down. I, I just need to think about this. It... My time is short, Miss Wheaton. Please, call me sister, why don't you? Everyone does. Mr. Rimbauer has, has agreed to open Rose Red for my group over the Memorial Day weekend. It's only nine days away. I, I need to know if I can count on Annie. In fact, I'm, I'm having an orientation meeting this Monday night uh, for the participants here in the Windsor Hall at the university. It would be great if Annie could join us. You understand that if Annie goes to Rose Red, I go too, don't you? That, that, that's fine, of course. Um, when can I know Ms. Wheaton, the sister? I, I might be able to scrape up as much as $12,000 if, uh, that is, if you could make a solid commitment to the expedition right now. I can't do that. I... Goodbye, Ms. Reardon. Wait, uh, uh, when can I expect to hear from you? I'll be in touch. Wait, the, the, the orientation, Monday night? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Uh, $10,000, 12000 You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think I sold the old family homestead cheap. You didn't sell it. You're renting it for a single weekend. I've got to have her. I've, I've got to have Annie Wheaton. Why? I've got the makings of, of a good group here, but they're candles. Annie Wheaton is a, a searchlight. If anyone can wake up Rose Red, she is the one. I told you this before, Dee. Waking up Rose Red is not a good idea. I want Annie. I want Annie Wheaton. Hello, dear. Hey, Mom. Hi, Dad. Long day. You look tired. I'll microwave you a TV dinner. Oh, no, it's OK. I had something to eat at the restaurant before. Is Annie OK? Annie's fine. Yeah, I'm wearing out her ears again. Not to mention ours. If it isn't a summer place, it's that other crap. Pennsylvania, six, 9,000 in the mood. Same two over and over all afternoon long. Guess she just likes it. Yeah, I know that. I just can't figure out why.
Thank God for small favors, huh? Despite what some people may think, psychic powers, telepathy, telekinesis, precognition, all the rest, have no moral gradient. They are neither good nor bad. Houses are different. Shirley Jackson was right, some houses are born bad. Houses like this one, houses like Rose Red, I knew it was big, but that's, that's enormous. Well, fortunately for us, an enormous dead cell. There have been no overt manifestations in Rose Red since 1995 or so. I believe that some houses have their own inner life, a life which may or may not be conscious. If there was once consciousness in Rose Red, it manifested itself early. The Seattle of 100 years ago was a different world, probably more different than any of us can imagine. Survival was an actual issue, not a TV show. Fortunes were made, often by bandits in tall hats. You could get out of the way or you could get run down. Those were the options. In the year 1906, you were on your own. Rose Red was built by John P. Rimbauer at the top of Spring Street in the center of Seattle as a wedding present to his wife. Rimbauer was founder of Omicron Oil Company until 1950, the biggest oil company in America. 1950 was the year Ellen Rimbauer disappeared. The trouble with Rose Red started even before there was a house. Construction crews worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was that even before there was a house there, that piece of ground seemed to make people Get mad. Chicken. I mean, literally mad. The teamster made no effort to get away, just dropped the gun on the seat of his wagon and went down the street to a Seattle saloon, which is where the police found him. Teamster's name was Harry Corbin. When he was tried, he claimed he remembered nothing from breakfast that morning till the time when he woke up in a jail cell with a knot behind his ear. The judge didn't believe him, and neither did the jury. He got 25 years. I think Harry Corbin may have been Rose Red's first victim, first male victim. There has always been a difference between the way Rose Red treats the ladies and the gentlemen. What do you mean, uh, exactly? In time, Nick. All in good time. John Rimbauer and Ellen Gilchrist were married on November 12th, 1907. He was 40, she was 20. By the day they said their I do's, Rose Red had been under construction for a year. And already, there had been three deaths, in addition to the murder of Rimbauer's first foreman. Pick it up! One man was decapitated by a sheet of falling glass. Another fell from a scaffold and broke his neck. And the third choked to death on a piece of apple. This is the way Rose Red looked when it was completed in 1909. And in case your memory needs refreshing, 
This is the way it looks today. It's as if it metastasized. Rose Red has how many rooms? I don't think anyone really knows. You could count on Monday and call it 74. You could come back on Friday and come up with 87 or 97. That's impossible, isn't it? That's Rose Red, sweetheart. How many people have actually disappeared there, Miss Red? And surely there must be an accurate account of them. Yeah, 23 since the end of the First World War. You'll forgive me if I say I find that almost impossible to believe. Of course you do. Anyone would. But I assure you it is true. Five men and 18 women. Rose Red has always been particularly fond of the ladies. Uh, please, please, remember, we are speaking of a house which has fallen dormant. It better be, because $5,000 isn't enough if it isn't. Well, when was the last disappearance? 1972, almost 30 years ago. And as I said before, there have been no observable phenomena since... Who was uh, it? Um, the last one? Pam. Pam, we, we've got a lot of ground to cover here. I hardly think we need to focus on... A woman on the Historical Society's annual tour. She was with the group when they went upstairs. It wasn't until the tour was over they realized she wasn't with them anymore. They didn't find her, but they did find her purse. Finished? Yeah. Thank you. The lady's name was Liza Albert, and since her disappearance, the house has been closed to tours. With no psychic energy for the house to feed on, it seems to have fallen into a sleep, then a coma, and now... It's a dead cell. Exactly. I wouldn't bet on that if I were you. Rose Red wasn't finished by the time John and Ellen got married, but they were in no hurry to set up housekeeping. They passed the time with an enormous leisurely honeymoon. They were gone a year. They circled the globe on liners like this one, the Ocean Star. John Rimbauer's favorite part of the Grand Tour was Africa. Ellen didn't enjoy it quite as much. In fact, she nearly died. Was it malaria? Probably not. In her diary, she called it an unmentionable disease carried by men and suffered by women. <laughs> Doesn't exactly look prostrate with worry, does he? But with or without him, Ellen recovered. And when she and John finally took up residence in Rose Red, she was pregnant. January 1909, that would have been. John thought the house was finished. What he didn't know is that the house would never be done. Not in his lifetime, not in hers. What makes Rose Red one of the world's most fascinating psychic artifacts is that the house continued to grow until its death in 1995 or 96. Until 1950, changes and additions were made according to the will of Ellen Rimbauer. And her will, ladies and gentlemen, was iron. After 1950, after 1950, Rose Red grew on its own.
In the fall of 1909, Ellen Rimbauer gave birth to a son. Grampy. Your grandfather, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid so. In her diary, she wrote, I have called him Adam, for he is the first. Zucchina, the woman who came back from Africa with her, saw her through the labor, which was difficult. In her diary, Ellen never refers to Zucchina as her servant. First, she calls her my friend, and later, my sister. When Ellen gave birth to a daughter with a withered arm, she blamed her African sickness and her husband's sexual appetites. Although she wrote, in my mind, they are one, to which she added, damn all men. John and Ellen's daughter was born in April of 1911, and April was what they called her. I love it. In the years following the birth of Ellen's daughter, Ellen became convinced that her fever, which recurred periodically, would kill her young. That made her easy game for Madame Stravinsky, as she called herself. And if you have anything to say to us, you may use my body to speak. Give us a sign. Show us a sign. Not even Sukina could convince her that the old lady was a fraud. Beloved spirits, we invite you to commune with us. Show us a sign. Fraud or not, Madame Stravinsky, known to sign. police in San Francisco and Los Angeles as Cora Fry, changed Ellen Rimbauer's life one night in August of 1914. What did she tell her? She said Great Graham wouldn't die until the house was finished. Great Graham told her it was finished, and Madame S told her it isn't finished until you say it's finished. Until you say. Ellen took it seriously. Probably she was right to. Everything else aside, she never had another attack of her African fever. Oh, he was psychosomatic in the first place. Probably just PMS, right, Em? I wouldn't be at all surprised. A new wing, the first of many, started going up the next week. What did her husband have to say about that? Nothing. She gave him a son in 1909, a daughter in 1911. The girl had a withered arm, true, but the son was fine and well, and it was the son John Rimbauer cared about. In his mind, I'd say Ellen had fulfilled her function and could pretty much do as she liked. Would you agree? Yes. Besides, he had affairs of his own to tend to. Ellen continued to make additions to the house until her disappearance in 1950, over 40 years of well-financed eccentricity. When she ran out of conventional things to build, she hired a series of contractors and architects to build unconventional stuff. Such as? The so-called Tower Folly was completed in 1921. John Rimbauer jumped to his death from it two years later. Was it suicide? Or did he run into something he couldn't deal with? The certificate said accidental death. The gossip said suicide or ghosts. In any case, during its active years, and they were very active, women in rose red had a tendency to turn up missing, and men had a tendency to turn up dead. The bad days are over. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Are you sure? Positive. Mm -hmm. Then what exactly do you want from us, Miss Red? First off, let's all get on a first-name basis, shall we? That'll make things a little less difficult. This... this can be a difficult field. People either Speaking don't understand our goals or refuse to credit our findings. Some people are actively cruel. And... Research goals? 
Yes, 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 yes. My research goals specify measurable psychic phenomena. Hard data, in other words, telemetry readouts and anomalous energy levels, primarily. I want readouts that even the most stupid, sarcastic, obtuse member of this so-called scientific department will have to accept. And if I get a little crazy on the subject from time to time, please, please forgive me. I, I put in a lot of long days. If rose red is a dead cell, how much proof can you expect to find there? If you apply electricity to the muscles in the leg of a dead frog, the muscles will contract hours after the frog has died. You people are my psychic equivalent of electricity. My goal is modest. A single twitch. One single twitch. If I get it, if I get it, my reputation will be secure for the rest of my life. More importantly, Together, we can help legitimize a branch of psychology which has been treated as a poor relation for far too long. What are you doing here, Mr. Rimbauer? What are your special talents? Just protecting the family interests. I've promised the eminent professor one good shot at the old family mansion, and then the developers await tech star condominiums, the future. You're going to let him tear it down? It's a piece of history. Well, history don't pay no rent, and the kid is broke. Hardly the most noble of motives. Are we the team? The whole team? She hopes not. Beg pardon? I was hoping for one more, but that's starting to look iffy. Um, if I have to make do with you five, then, uh, then I'll count myself lucky. I'll see you this coming Friday at 2 p.m. sharp, and I'm sure it will be a Memorial Day weekend to remember. Uh, and now if you could all please come here and join me. I, I li I'd like to close with a circle. thing went out with high button shoes. Joyce, is there anything particular you'd like us to focus on? Oh, I guess just goodwill, good thoughts, each other. Mm, that's lovely. Say cheese. Hey, <laughs> are you okay? I'm, uh, I'm just gonna go make some room. Looks a bit gray about the gills. No, 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 no. no. Well, it may be half a glass, but no more. Hello. Uh, yes, hello. I'd like to speak with Rachel, please. Is she there? Who is this? I'd like to speak with Rachel, please. I know who this is. It's a crazy lady from the college, isn't it? How you doing, crazy lady? Daddy, is that call for me? Mr. Wheaton, my business is with your older daughter. I'd be grateful if you do. Oh, no, see, I think you got it wrong. You have no business here. Now with Sissy, now with Annie, now with any of us. Now, don't you ever call here again, you got that? Daddy, that was my call. No, no, that was just some crazy lady. No, that was my call, and you have no right. Yeah, I do. As long as you live in my house and you eat my food, I do. Stop it, both of you. I know what the crazy lady wants. Just like I know that you've been talking to her behind my back. And let me tell you this, Annie's not going anywhere near Rose Red. Mama? She doesn't say, I say. Mama, why don't you help me once? Please, just this once, will you please speak up? I've told you a thousand times I won't take sides between you and your father. Mama, 
What about Annie's side, the Gat School? What planet are you living on? What, you gonna put her in the Gat School with 5,000 bucks? Professor Reardon has already promised 12. <laughs> I knew she was a crazy lady. What's your excuse? Uh, 20 grand's what it would take. 20 grand at least. A year. Rose Red is famous. Something happens while we're there. It could be worth a fortune to Annie. Are you sure? You know, I, I can just see her on her all huh? I, I'm A. Wheaton. I'm gonna tell folks all about a haunted house. Stop it. Don't you mock her. I am saving her from crazy lady number one and crazy lady number two. Now, that is it, sister. When this case is closed, I don't want to hear any more about it. And I think our dear professor will be in luck. Is, is that something you, you see? What's your special trick, Pam? Um, I'm what psychic journals call a, a touch now. It, it doesn't always work, but sometimes when I handle things, I see stuff or get feelings. Of course, a lot of times, there's nothing. What about you, Vic? Two people, mid-twenties. She's in a blue dress. He's in jeans. He's blonde, over-golded. He's got a case of Roman hands and Russian fingers. What in the world are you talking? Go outside. You wanna? Fresh sheet, Nespa. You're precognitive. I can tell a hawk from a hand saw when the wind's in the northwest. <laughs> what about you, Kathy? Oh, I, I, I'm an automatic rider. A Ouija board. Yes. Well, but I don't like the Ouija board. The, the, the channel's too wide, and sometimes uh, what comes through is very unpleasant. This is this is better. Um, sometimes it's precog, sometimes it's astral. Mostly it's just people to people. Someone concentrate hard. You, Pam. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's not going to work. Steve! <laughs> what about you, Steve? Nick? <laughs> he calls her D. Now why does he do that, I wonder? Nick? 
Oh, I, I do a, a little of this, a little of that. You know, sometimes I get lucky and things turn out all right. What about our new friend, Emery? What do we know about him? Your friend, not mine. I think Emery is, is chiefly post-cognitive. He sees the past. Not the most comfortable of talents. Here's two good thoughts. Good will. Good thoughts, good will. Read my lips. Save the warnings for someone who's not broke. Okay? I remember that day. She was happy, wasn't she? We all were. Oh, man. Would you look at this? Yes, those were the days, huh? Ignorance is bliss. Daddy, what Annie is, isn't anyone's fault. It's not hers, it's not mine, it's not yours. I know, I know that. But you're too busy thinking about what you want for Annie to think about what she can do. I mean, have you forgotten what happened after she got bit by the Stanton's dog? How the stones came down? Or what she did to those pipes? After what she did tonight, how can you have any doubts about what she wants? Sweetheart, taking Annie into a genuinely haunted house? I mean, that's like using a cigarette lighter to see how full your gas tank is. It's a chance. That's what you don't understand. It's a chance for her to get out. Yeah, and for you to get out from under. I just want what's best for Annie. I know, sissy, but you don't know what that is. Believe me. Shame you can't do the same to the other 40,000 or so, hmm? People read it today and line their kitty litter boxes with it tomorrow. I think they'll remember the photo. Some will very likely take it out for inspection the next time a university bond issue comes up before the voters. See, a, a photo like this could put a hundred worthwhile programs to beggary, but what do you care? Do you have a point, Carl? If so, please get to it. I have a lot to do. Crystals to polish, Ouija's to wax. 
Did you put that kid Bollinger up to this? You did, didn't you? You told him where to go and when to point his camera. Your paranoia is showing. Ah! Oh, it's a nasty little cut. Well, listen, uh, I'm afraid I have a bit of bad news for you, old girl. I'm not old, not yet, anyway. And I'm certainly not your girl. What are you talking about? The executive committee's been in session regarding tenure. What? Why? No one in the department's up for tenure. The only thing they could... <gasps> you really are a bastard. Mm. The committee voted five to two to revoke your tenure. We tried to contact you so you could attend the meeting. You'll find a message on your machine if you just check. I mean, actually, I'm surprised the spirits didn't tell you. See, the general consensus is it's time to stop the silliness. I will fight you every step of the process. Of you, and you'll lose. Your days of haunting the Whimsor Psychology Department, to coin a phrase, are not quite hmm. over, but I'm happy to say they're numbered. When I come back from Rose Red with proof, you will... Oh, it's, this is the, the, the rallying cry of crackpots and, and deluded religionists since, since the Stone Age. The proof is out there. This is sad, really. You used to be a respected writer and lecturer in the field of child psychology, but then you got bitten by this... Virus. It is a legitimate field of psychological it's investigation. Crap. It's sleaze. It's a spit in the eye of rational thought. But the good news is that Rose Red will be your last goose chase as a member of this faculty. You're an idiot and you're blind. What have you found proof? Hmm? Let's just suppose. Proof, photographs, audio recordings of the, of the clanking chains, telemetry of some sort. What difference would it make? What good would it do if you ever even considered such thoughts? I feel remarkably well today, Carl. Despite of all your crap. See, this, this is the world we live in, an experience with our five senses. Skin, smooth and rational. Every cause has its effect, and every effect can be predicted with the right database at hand. But there's a world under that world, Carl. Blood under the skin. That's what rationalistic asses like you never see. It's a world that's liquid instead of solid, hot instead of just warm. It is a world full of mysteries. You don't like it, do you? No. So don't give me your bull about bond issues and busted programs. You're afraid of what's under the skin. But I'm not. Do you hear me, Carl? I'm not. If you've given me something. Oh, yeah, that's what it comes down to, doesn't it? The bottom line, you're afraid of catching something. Go on, get out of here. Go wash your face, and then you can trot on down to the infirmary and get an AIDS test. When this semester's over, you're done here. You hear me? You're done here. Oh. When you finish teaching, I'm going to see to it. You're crazy. You're totally insane. Good day, old boy. What are you looking at? Nothing. Go look at it somewhere else. We did it, didn't we? We really nailed her. What's on your face? Never mind. Never mind. We have a great deal to talk about, young man. The story's not over? <laughs> it's just beginning. It's just beginning. the Department of Questions Better Not Answered. If a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, does it make any noise? Mm -hmm. Who cuts the barber's hair? Who, who leaves money under the tooth fairy's pillow? How, how come no one realizes Clark Kent is just Superman wearing glasses? Mm -hmm. If I didn't own Rose Red, would I be in bed with you right now? Mm -hmm. Hello. How was your day, dear? Give it back. How was your day? Or would you prefer I just rolled over and made myself small? Well, they revoked my tenure. Carl Miller dropped by the office to give me the news himself. Wait, can they do that? Maybe. Yeah, probably. 
Bollinger's article in the paper made us look like the stupid family, with me as the head stupid. Want to turn off your light? Well, you know, you're, you're pretty damn calm about it. I heard from sister. She accepted the 12000 I offered. When I come back from Rose Red with hard data, there'll be four dozen universities willing to hire me. First, though, I'm going to write a book. And it is going to sell a gazillion copies. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I once heard you say that the only certainty when dealing with the paranormal is that nothing is certain. What if you spend three days in Rose Red and nothing happens? But it will. Annie Wheaton is my guarantee. She's, oh... Let's just say she's one of a kind. You know, Rose Red is not a true dead cell. Annie's gonna wake it up, Steve. And if you would just let the house stand for another six months, the research possibilities... Are... No, no, it's coming down in July, and I can't wait. I, I cannot wait. How can you hate it so much? It eats my relatives. <laughs> Or, I'm sorry. Did you miss that in your research? <laughs> it's just that it means a lot to me. Yeah, too much, maybe. Yeah. You're gonna need some downtime when this is over, some serious R&R. &R. Well, you have the cell phone right here. And you got plenty of film. Of course, I have plenty of film, but uh, I don't know if this is such a good idea. Well, don't tell me you're afraid. <laughs> no, of course I'm not afraid. It's just big. What if I get lost? Oh, Kevin, Kevin, you know, you're about to step out in the real world in just a couple of weeks. That's where you're apt to get lost. But you nail this story. You can write your own ticket. See, I thought that's what you wanted. Why don't you come in there with me? Well, I do have a few things to do, like running my department, overseeing finals. <laughs> you just call me when you get the pictures, and either I or my wife will come get you. She can't stand that weird and bitch either. If they catch me in there, they're going to tear me apart. You know that, don't you? There's no reason why they should. If you're just reasonably careful. I guess. Ooh. Don't forget this. Well, just, uh, try and get a good picture of them being psychic. Professor Miller, I don't think step this is such a good upper, idea. Step upper, boy. Step upper. Professor Miller. You're a step away from stardom, dear boy. Just get the pictures.
solarium kitchen tool shed back door front. Oh, hey, I thought this house was empty. You would be Mr. Bollinger, I believe, the reporter. Yeah, I'm Bollinger, but how did you know? Come in, sir. You expected. Ma'am? Where are you? This way. Ma'am, I seem to have lost you. Ma'am? Is anybody here? Funny, but I want to leave, all right? Let me out! Hey, I could use a little help in here. I'm in the greenhouse.
be here. Come on. Okay. Oh, yes, you're always okay. Now, listen to me. If anything happens that you can't handle, anything beyond a few telesmic manifestations, call me and I'll come and get you. I will, Mom. I have to go. You call me anyway, so I know you're all right. I will. I always do. I have to go. They're waiting. Well, let them wait. They won't do much without you, huh? Now, turn around. Mom. Turn around and stay away from that blonde girl. She looks like a tramp. Now give mommy a kiss. Oh, you're all over lipstick. Fix yourself. Well, friends, I've seen new frontiers in abnormal psychology stretching out before us. How exciting. Especially if you move your bowels. Gosh, the day before summer camp must have been a busy time in the Waterman household. Shut up. Off to the house on Haunted Hill, I see. <laughs> oh, and with, um, with about $100,000 worth of department equipment, I guess. I've got all the proper paperwork if you want to see it signed in all the proper places. Oh, signed by Rogers. When I was on vacation, he was acting in my stead. It's very clever of you. Is there a point to any of this? Oh, I'm just trying to be pleasant. If you'll excuse us, Professor Miller, we're in a bit of a hurry. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Places to go. Ghost to bust. Isn't that right, Mr. Rembauer? Yeah, more or less. Yes. Well, do try and keep the equipment in one piece. Good luck. The spirits have done it all in one night. Hmm? That's what Scrooge says when he wakes up a changed man. That's what Miller made me think of. Scrooge on Christmas morning. I don't trust him. Hello, are, are you the group? With the the Rose Red group? Yes. Um, I'm I'm Pam Asbury. Um, this is Kathy Kramer. Hi. Victor Kandinsky. Vic, just Vic. Oh. Nick Hardaway. And um, Emery Waterman. And um, you must be. Oh, I'm Sissy Wheaton, and this is Annie. <sighs> I was sure we were going to miss you guys. The traffic was just horrible. And... We we're very glad you didn't. Sister, uh, I'll, I'll do it before Rachel. Oh, either is fine. Oh, stop it, Annie. Just quit it. Good God, she's retarded. If you keep your psychological evaluation of Miss Wheaton to yourself, then we won't ask you any embarrassing questions about your relationship with your mother. Chin chin. Folks, I think we're ready. Where are you? I told you to keep that phone with you at all times. All right, in any case, they've left the campus. They should be there in 40 minutes, give or take. So be ready and call me back.
seems to be looking at us. It is, Karen. It is. Steve. You okay? Huh? Yeah, you should find Be not afraid. Only believe. Actually, we're lucky. Most of the electronic stuff was delivered and installed earlier this week. What are these? House plans. Probably about as useful as a 14th century map of Africa. And here, of course, we have a coil of rope. How you doing, sweetie? You okay? Mommy? I'm scared. Here. He wants us here. 